So previously we've installed all the dependencies um, for Apache, which in turn is for curl and ultimately we're trying to get Python uh, PY test installed, uh, which is now required by a few of the packages we've installed. So we'll have to do some rebuilding. Some have also avoided just because of this little um, Python module. But you can see how quickly um, the dependency becomes some sort of dependency hell where you need to resolve um, what order you're going to apply dependencies in if there are circular dependencies where you jump into that circle and then how you complete that circle. Um, but what you'll find at the end of this when we come back out of this is that a lot of the dependencies what well, sorry a lot of the packages would have been built that are required by some of the more top level um, applications um, and you'll see a similar thing happening when we come to do the uh, multimedia side of things uh, there's quite a strong tight-knit set of packages there to to wade through as well so let's get on with apache download the package and a patch file So it's called Apache, but the file's called HTTPD. So um, I'm not sure whether to actually run this as a server or not, but certainly we'll add the group and user that are recommended to run the server as. to the patch and this uh, two set commands and then we'll run this configure and I doubt if I'm going to change this because um, uh, from what I recall from memory patch is quite a complex package uh, so what have we got here Auth NZ FCGI build fast CGI authorized the base authentication authorization. Okay, so it builds an extra module which might be useful. Let's stick that in. Enable all mod shared all CGI. Okay, so that's already in there. NPMS shared all. It's various, yeah, it looks like it's just this top one that's an additional option. Build some extra functionality into it. And let's build the package. Okay, that's done. There's no test suite, so we'll build it. Uh, sorry, install it. Okay, and then we need to install the init scripts. So I'll put them in if they cause a problem, we'll have to um, just stop them. And we can start it now. And usually 
to prove it's working, uh, we can get up a window and in theory just type in local host. That hasn't worked, so I thought usually that does um, oh, is it trying to connect to something called localhost? Let's put the IP address in just to loop back. No, it's not working. So maybe there is some extra configuration to do on top of just starting the script. There's no information there about testing it. Okay, so that's done and installed. Uh, copy that into my spreadsheet. And we can shut that down and go back to curl. Like that was something else then because I can't see Apache. Oh, there it is down there, optional. Right, okay. Um, S tunnel and sand was quite a big build, wasn't it? Dbus, we've got. Not sure actually we could install this is only a few dependencies left now oh it's these optional ones um yeah i think i'll leave that for the moment so this will require a rebuild um, so i'll just go and do s tunnel now so we've got the dependency we've installed lib nsl So, yep, there it is. So, let's copy that into the spreadsheet and fetch the package. Um, S tunnel demo will be running the troop jail by an unprivileged user. Create the new using group. So let's become root and add these in. A signed certificate and private keys necessary to run the S tunnel daemon after the package is installed or instructions to generate them. However, if you own already have created a signed SSL you wish to use, copy to that the pen file must be formatted as shown. Okay, so let's run the configure. See if there's any other options? No. So build it, and we can test it. So that looks okay and install it All right, it does say make cert to also install a sample certificate um, which it also says in the book um, if you do not already have an SSL create the S-Tunnel pen file in the ATC directory using the command below you will be prompted to enter the necessary information Ensure you reply to the common name with the name or IP address you'll be using to access the services. Okay. Country name, so UK for me, state or province. So let's put London. County, England. Organization. I'll just put my name there. Unit. I'll just leave that blank. Common name. So 
I presume I put in the local host name here. The IP address you'll be using to access the services. Yeah, that sounds like that makes sense. So that seems to have done that. Configuration as the root, create the directory used for the PID file created when the S-Tunnel daemon starts. Oh, um, before we do that, let's have a look at this file here that should have been created from that previous command. Permission denied. Okay, that's the key file. Oh yeah, I see. So the first is the encrypted lines of the private key and the second is the encrypted lines of the certificate and then any DH parameters look like we haven't got any of them. So that looks all right. So let's install uh, minus the SU. Create the directory use of the PID file created when the S tunnel daemon starts. Now create a basic S tunnel comp file. Finally, add the services you wish to encrypt to the port. The configuration file, the format is as follows. Um, well, I think what I'll do is just add in the local IP address so insert so host name I haven't really got a clue actually let's just try without the Port number, I presume it will use 443. And we'll see if that will be sufficient because I'm not sure what or how to use this, but um, if there's any problems, hopefully the uh, errors will indicate what might need to be fixed. So we'll put a boot script in. Let's start it, see if anything untoward happens. So it's failed. Unknown TCP service cannot resolve except target. So that is not right. Host name, name and port number. Uh, name let's try local host colon add services you wish to encrypt okay let's try 80 the web service Uh, I wonder if this is an indication of what needs to be done here. Um, so accept connections on port 443. This is for HTTPS. And connect via port 80. So let's emulate that. That would make sense. The connection is encrypted. Uh, accepted from uh, an encrypted port. Right, yes, that's worked now, so it likes that. Let's just check if there's any kernel messages. No, there isn't. Okay, I think that's probably okay. So let's tidy that up. on to curl 
So curl or reinstall after Samba. I'll make a note of that. So we've got everything else installed. Just Samba because it's quite a detailed build. Um, sometimes you don't need to rebuild some of the dependencies and other times you do. Sometimes they just work. Um, uh, use dependencies when they're running. Oh, okay, we've already downloaded it. Uh, and other times they actually do need libraries or you know some sort of link to the program so it does need to exist when you build the package. And if you're unsure, um, what I do is just build it anyway and then you know if it does need it, it would have found it. So let's extract curl. Sure. Oh, I built this already, maybe, and there's just more dependencies now. Oh, yes, I have. Yeah, rebuild after all dependencies built, including libssh and CRS. So, what I'll do is I'll strike that out to show that that particular rebuild note has been dealt with. So this is a rebuild already in itself, which is explains why I already had the package installed. Uh, sorry, downloaded. So let's add that in. Threaded Zara. So we can add with lib SSH2 because we've got that. And we can now enable Ares because we've got that installed as well. Okay, so there's still a few other things that are not enabled um, that aren't even mentioned in the book. Um, it's found LDAP. CRS, yeah. So that looks all good. It's found SSL and SSH. So let's build it and test it. Our syndrome just took about five minutes previously, so I'll we'll just wait for it to complete.
Well, that took a little bit longer to test than last time, probably because the extra functionality that curl has now got. And also, as I remember, there was about 13 or 1200 tests that were actually um, run out of the 1600. So you can see there has been more that's been done. So I imagine once Samba has been installed, there'll be even more tests to run um, on the last uh, build of curl. So now let's build, uh, install, or reinstall the package. Uh, let's just do these commands carefully in case some are unnecessary or some might affect what's already been installed. No, it looks like it's straightforward. So that's okay. Right, so that's curl done. And we're now back to git, which needs curl, needs a patch we've got. GNU PG runtime, maybe used to sign git commits tags or verify signatures of them. Okay, let's have a look at that one. So this has got a few dependencies. Right, I think we can install these. Um, I'll skip Image Magic because that will probably entail that those multi multimedia dependencies, um, and I'll be doing that later on when we come onto the more GUI related packages. Um, so I'll have to mark this up as a rebuild. Lib Asuan, Lib GPG error. Um, I think we've got that one. Oh no, is it one we've got to build then, is it? Don't look like it. Oh yeah, sorry, there it is right in front of me. Okay, I thought that had been installed. Text Live is not installed yet. But it will be, like I said, I think that's going to be more the graphics types things yeah so um, and it's a graphic environment as well which we haven't completed yet so um, that'll have to be delayed as well uh, so let's install this now oh it's just for alternative forms of documentation so we can reinstall this to get that extra documentation rebuild after text live so let's fetch the package so obviously just to get the package working if you're not worried about the documentation then um, only one build is necessary. But if you want to have a complete installation, including the documentation, then yes, you would need to rebuild this, which is what I'll do just for demonstration purposes. So configure, there's no options for configure. So do get documentation in HTML and plain text formats by running these commands. So do get some documentation. So these are different um, formats that can be built with text live. So let's run make check. That looks good. Become root and install the package. And we didn't install the alternative format, so that's that package complete. Rip G 
script we've done. Uh, yeah, we've done that. So lib k spa sba. So we haven't got any dependencies for this that we're going to install anyway. So extract the KSBA. This is uh, an easy package to install. Okay, run some checks, all seven passed. And hit install. So that's complete. NPTH. So that hasn't got any dependencies. Makes it a bit easier for us. configure and make and make check that's all good and once again we can install and it's done uh, what else do we need here recommended GNU TLS uh, common function installed that or not so I'm going to do a search. Right now it hasn't been installed yet. So is that one that's due to be installed here? Doesn't look like it. It's not there, so let's get that up. So, oh yeah, it's got lots of dependencies. recommended as well right okay let's see how far we can get with this um, right unbound I'm sure that's caused me problems in the past so I'm not going to install that. Yes, yeah, DNS resolver. So I think it interfered with my own DNS resolver. I'm not sure if it is because of that reason or just interferes with name resolving full stop. So I won't install that. Um, I seem to remember doing BLFS once before and having tests fail or builds fail and or tests hanging. Um, because of this, uh, it's quite possible I didn't configure it properly. Um, so text live is due to be done. GTK doc. GTK. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one either. I think that will have to be left till later. Um, I 
So we don't need libidm because we've got libidm2. Net tools used for testing. So that can be installed now. Falgrind. Okay, so we could probably do this then. Um, yeah, so let's put a note to rebuild this after text live and uh, GTK doc. So let's fetch it. Um, yeah, we've got all these all installed. I recognize those. Um, so yeah, there aren't any other dependencies for the time being. So let's copy the configure command. Is there any other options? Default trust all. So use that if you haven't got P11 kit installed, which is probably unlikely. All oh, right, GTA doc is for the API documentation. So. I'll get rid of that dependency requirement because I'm not going to be installing any API documentation. OpenSSL uses switch if you wish to build the OpenSSL compatibility library, so that could be useful. Use that switch, we haven't got P11 kit we have, and with included Unistring, which I think we did install, yeah. Oh, I see. Use that if you haven't installed LibUniString. Okay, so we'll leave that blank. Okay, there's a DNS sec root key in. All right, it's just mentioning about unbound because I've not installed it. I'm not going to install that. Um, looks like it does need it to verify something. Verification of, of, of DNS responses. So if that's important, you will need to install unbound. Um, let's have another look at that. I guess I could install it, but not start the daemon, not install the scripts for the daemon. Oh, so if you want to use unbound for local DNS resolution. Yeah, maybe I'll do that then. Just install it, but not install the scripts to start the server, to start the daemon. So let's pause with GNU TLS. And... Insert unbound into the running order. Uh, right, let's open this up in a proper tab. Python 2 is optional. Um, I'm going to try and avoid installing Python 2 because it's well out of date. Um, as it's an optional package, 
definitely not going to install it. Um, Sphinx, that's purely for Python bindings documentation. Um, Swig could be useful, I guess. Yeah, we can install that. So that's another file to do just before Unbound. So let's put that in and build Swig. If the internet's gone down or if this link's not working. Okay, there it goes. Oh, right, it's extremely slow, the looks of it. So, let's wait for it to get going. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, extract that. And configure without maximum compile warnings, disables trip errors and lure headers okay so I think we'll just accept those default options build it and we can run some tests so I'll time this test running execute for the language installed on your machine so disk based and SP values given for the test may vary and should be considered as mere orders of magnitude according to Swix documentation the failure of some tests should not be considered harmful the Go tests are buggy and may generate a lot of meaningless output. Well, I don't think we've got Go installed at the moment, so let's run that as it is. Okay, there's quite a few there. So, in theory, we could run this near the end to include more packages. Um, I can't remember if PHP is one that's going to be installed, but Java is. Go possibly could be, so I'll make a little note to rebuild after many of the languages have been installed as Java and Go.
Right, so it looks like it has completed all its tests. And it looks like it tested Perl last time. Um, doesn't mention any way of checking results. So that looks like it was successful, so as I can tell. So we'll install it. And like I said, I think I might rebuild that towards the end of the BLFS installation um, just to see if we can get more languages supported with this. So tidy that up and go on to unbound. Okay, so it needs a separate user and group to run in. So let's put those in. And then uh, configuration. Need lib event. I think we've got lib event. Let me check that. I hope we have. Yeah, so we can add that switch in. And probably add in these Python bindings as well. Can't find Python in your system path. That's interesting. Oh, sorry, that will be the Python 2, won't it? Yes. So we need to remove that. Oh, right, and the swig was a Python binding, so maybe that was unnecessary what we've in installed swig for in this case, but um, I'm sure it's used elsewhere. So let's now build... Haven't got Doxygen installed, so let's run make check. So it says test OK. So as the root user, SU, we can install it. It's done. Configuration. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to affect the name resolution. When unbound is installed, some packages may fail if the EC root key not found. This file is created by running boot script. Installation by alternatively created by running the following command as a root user. So I'll run this because I'm not going to run the boot scripts in. Okay, so. I'm going to leave it as that. So the files exist, but it's not going to be running explicitly through um, boot scripts. So let's now see how the new TLS deals with what we've done. So let's see if we recall this configure command. I can't remember if we changed it or not. Oh yes, open, enable OpenSSL compatibility. OK, 
okay it looks like we haven't had that error this time no so that's good um, yeah there's that Dane library that was mentioned uh, up here to build a Dane library so that's worked okay so let's build new TLS That's done. Let's run some tests. Okay, so just before the end there, there was another status there where there was a total of, well, 78 tests there and all passed, six tests there all passed. And then finally there was 25 tests, um, eight passed and the rest was skipped for um, whatever reason. But there were no failures, so that's the main thing. So let's now do a make install. There's no configuration, so that's complete. And I've got a note to rebuild that just for some documentation. So back to GNU PG, pin entry next. So I've got these two Emacs. I don't normally install that. Uh, let's have a look at this one. FLTK. Uh, yeah, this is getting into the realms of graphics. So I'll pause that. KD from so this needs to be reinstalled at a later point. Um, and it's a recommendation, so we'll install it now. address and I'll put a note 
attempt to rebuild. Okay. Um, so let's check the uh, the options here in enable inside Emacs so default is no that's okay because I've got Emacs installed pin entry QT default is yes so we need to set this to no because we haven't got QT installed yet same with GTK2 haven't got that installed yet so we'll set that to no even if other pen entry is a still pen entry we seem then can't. Again, gnome three we need to set that to no. Default is maybe for TTY. Okay, that's the one they've set up to force it. So let's run it like that. So you can see those options are all been turned off there so that's okay so let's make our lib secret is that something oh lips oh yes we can install that later anyway i don't think that's particularly onerous but um let's have a look um no i'll leave that till later i think as part of when we rebuild uh, when we build the other options so that was quick and just sudo make install so that's pin entry done for now back to GNU PG got curl I think we did fuse yeah magic I'm going to do later because there's a graphics program lib USB copy link address Um, so we need some configuration for USB in the kernel. So let's do sudo su cd sources Linux make menu config. And let's go to device drivers. USB support, which is near the bottom, there it is. Support for host side USB, which is set. And it says these are the most common USB controllers for PC like systems. For modern systems, often XCH, XHCI is the only needed, even if the system is USB 2 ports. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought you had to enable each one for each speed that you wanted to support. Um, yeah, so I can't comment on that if that's absolutely true or not. I assume it must be. But you can see we've got USB 3 installed. Um, I think I'll leave these in. I need to do some tests on that. USB 2, USB 1.1, and I think the UHCI is for USB 1 support, so it looks like we've got everything installed. It won't be any harm to leave these in, in here anyway. Um, if they're not used, then it's not going to cause any issues. Uh, let's have a quick nosy at this link here. Okay, that's the bit at the beginning. All right, okay. So there's no changes here to make, so we don't need to rebuild the kernel. 
So we'll just do a configure and a make. No API documentation, so we'll just do make install. And that's that package done. to the next one uh, text live okay that looks like that's it so for GNU PG I'm going to rebuild after text live and image magic wasn't it yeah image Magic. Uh, right, so let's get on with this. I can't remember. I think I installed. I did. Yes, no, I haven't downloaded it. Right, so let's. Fetch it then. Paste and a patch. It looks like it might be for Emacs. So it might be unnecessary for me because I haven't got Emacs, I don't use it, so I'll never install it. Um, but we'll do the patch anyway. Yeah, it's to do with Emacs. So install the patch and then we make a temporary build directory. We have a configure command. Let's check the options. Allows more tests to be run with make check. Well, that sounds like a good thing. And enable G13 program. It doesn't mention if there's a specific dependency that enables that. I don't know what it is for. Tool to create, mount, or mount an encrypted file system container. Okay, that sounds like that might be useful. Oh, Why well, this configuration is so slow? Uh, seems to be doing something at those points and it's just sped up again. Okay, so TPM, I presume that's software support. This is quite a modern machine, so I imagine it has got T. Well, yes, it has because it came with Windows 11. So um, that must be some sort of software layer that it can't find. Apart from that, it looks like it's going to build just about every part of it. Okay, that's done. So we can make some documentation. Looks like it's HTML and text based, plain text documentation and alternate formats with text live so again I was saying I'm going to rebuild this off text live to build those let's now run make check
Okay, so it looks like everything passed there. Um, there's no red or anything. There's no errors, so that's all okay. Let's now install the package and documentation. Didn't build, build the alternative alternate um, formats of documentation, so we'll ignore that and tidy up. So that's new PG. So we're back to Git again. And the next one we've got is PCRE. Like, oh right, so PCRE is deprecated now, I didn't know that. Uh, in either case, config with enable JIT, which we've done. Subversion with Perl bindings. So that can be good to allow Git to support subversion. Let's have a look at these options here. Yeah, I think we've got most of this. Um, Java bindings. I'm not going to install Java till later on because again that requires uh, sort of graphics and multimedia type stuff. Graphics and sound. Dependencies. So that'll be a little bit later on. So I think I'll install this for now. And again, this is going to have to be reinstalled. I'm surprised how many packages I'm having to reinstall. I'm not sure um, if it's because I'm doing things a little bit differently this time or if there just are more interdependencies between packages now nowadays. Um, or maybe the editors have put in more of the interdependencies with other packages. I'm not sure why, but it does seem to be that I'm making notes of a lot more, a lot more rebuilds. Um, right, so let's get subversion up in another tab. So we need surf, which needs scones. We've got these two packages, so we can build this. Let's fetch it. So it's capital SC scones. So this looks like it's some sort of Python utility. Permission to, oh, all right, I've got to do all these as a root user. A strange way of installing. So let me do this again as the root user. And so I'll just copy some files to install it. So that's scones. Now we do surf. So run these commands in to build it. And that's done. So sudo minus E. And install it with that command. That's done. Back to subversion. Um, 
this one this has got a few dependencies uh, not sure about this one That's got some dependencies around GNOME and GTK, so that could get quite involved. So I think I'll install GNOME keyring, but I'll have to rebuild it after GCR has been built. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look at Glib. So that's GCI and it's got some requirements, that's got the requirement. And this is optional, right? So I won't install GNOME keyring at the moment. Um, as it's got too many dependencies on like the graphical side of things and GNOME side of things, uh, I'll have to reinstall subversion. At a later point to incorporate that. Let's have a look at lib secret. Again, that's the same thing with that. So we can do that one. I don't really want to install Python 2, all the if notes for tests. Um, so let's install this one next. So Python module PY 3C. Pilot with these two commands and install the package. And we'll do subversion next. But again, with a rebuild after. GNOME keyring and lib secret. Copy link address. Java as well. And Java. Okay, so let's now extract that. Adapt script to use Python three. Adapt. Python 2, uh, 3 2, sorry, and install with this command. Is there any other options? Double static, also for equals internal, internal Java. We've well, got Java, got JUnit. Do not use the Google Mock Testing Framework. 
Okay, so we'll accept the options as they are. And build Java bindings. We haven't got Java, so we can't do that. Um, we can do the Perl, Python, Ruby bindings as we've got those installed. So I'll run that one for Perl. Okay, and we'll build the Python bindings. And the Ruby bindings. Now we'll run the make check. an SQLite 3 module required. Oh, is that this Python 2, is it? Uh, looks like I'll have to install Python 2 to um, enable this. bit unfortunate. Right, okay. Um, let's have a look. See what it involves. Yeah, this is what we need here, this one here. So, okay, um, I'll leave subversion as it is there. I'm hoping that all that's required is the module will be found when we run make check again. So, let's insert a row in the spreadsheet. Uh, what do we, else do we need here? Well, I'm not going to install any of these because um, this is just being installed purely at the moment for testing unless um, there is another package that explicitly needs it for some functionality. Um, for example, the, the Bluetooth functionality. Uh, I'm not going to bother installing that. I'm not sure even if we've got TK or not, but... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure about TK. That could be something that might actually use. Uh, yeah, it's not there. Um, Excel libraries. Oh, I guess we could install this then. As there's no other dependencies. So. Right. Uh, let's open that. Spec okay. Python two. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with that unless absolutely necessary. But I will install TK as the sort of thing that may be used. So. 
So TK, put that in and fetch it. So CD Unix, and then there's a configure command. Uh, there's no other options, so I'll just run that as it is. Build package. The second command says run and test is not recommended. Failures will be reported during the test depending on the screen resolution. Well, we haven't got that at the moment. Um, can test it, make test, ensure you run it from next window display device. There's GLX extensions loaded. But even so, the test might hang, so it sounds like it's not a good idea at all. So let's just install it. Okay, that's done. Shut that down. Back to Python 2. So let's copy the link. And the patch. I'm not even going to bother with documentation because, like I say, this is only here to satisfy the tests at the moment of subversion. So I'll extract the package, change into it and start the installation of it. A set and a patch and then configuration. So if there's anything else to do. No. That looks okay as it is. Okay. Pre-release the build with all optimizations active. Please run configure enable optimizations. Uh, there's no mention about that in the book. Um, I guess we could try that. Which might improve performance a bit. Okay, so it hasn't told us about that option as we've used it this time. So let's now run make.
Well, it seems to have issued an error and then hung, so I'm not sure if this is actually stuck. Right, looks like it is waiting to time out. So I'll give it a little bit longer.
Okay, so that's completed. Um, there were some tests that failed, um, like those ones to do with threading. Um, it does say that some are expected to fail, including these ones here. There was a few more than that, but uh, I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Uh, Python finished with the necessary bits to build these modules were not found. So it could be why some of these have failed. So let's install it now. Uh, since Python 2 is in maintenance mode and Python 3 is recommended by Upstream for development, you probably do not need to install the documentation. So yeah, I'm going to skip that then. That's for the documentation for Python 2, so that should be it. So we'll shut that down, go back to subversion, and see if we can rerun the make check to carry on with the tests. And if it fails, then we'll have to rebuild it now that Python 2 is installed. No, okay. So. SQLite support for tests. Yeah, okay. So let's extract. Change into it. So I've got this grep to use Python 3, it says there. Ruby 3.2. Let's look for this configure command we used before. Okay, I didn't alter anything there. Build it again. Do the document API documentation. We haven't got Java yet, so let's install the Swig Perl bindings or rather build them. And the Python bindings. And the Ruby bindings. So now let's see if a test run now. And they don't, so that's strange. Um, Sure, we've got SQLite. Is that a problem? Yeah, we've definitely installed it. Python SQLite three module required. Was it 
Let's give lots of pull for tests. Just wondering if there's an option that's not mentioned here to build in the SQLite, but I can't imagine that that wouldn't be mentioned. To make this fail completely. Um, See if there's any options that mention SQLite. Doesn't look like there is. Apart from this with package. Go through these commands again and add on. Is there any others I added here? So let's add on with this cube light. No, I didn't recognize that. Let's run the configure again and see what happens. There may be some messages that need to be read. Um, I've actually just thought, I wonder if it's Python 3 that needs to be rebuilt with SQLite support. Oh yes. I wonder if that's the problem. So it's recommended on Python 3, but there's no explicit options being set. So I wonder if it's not Python 2 that is required, but actually we need to rebuild Python 3. Um, so let's do that next. I wonder if that's what's missing. Yeah, I'm going to do the same with this. I'm just going to build this as it is, and Blues and GDB will have to be built later on. Um, and then Python 3 will have to be rebuilt. So let's fetch. tools, the packages, so this is Python 3, rebuild after Blues and GDB. So 
So Python 3 this time. So I don't think from what I saw before we need to add anything to the configure command here. So I've added enabled optimizations by default. Um, I guess we could try the LTO. Optional switches and labels and thick link optimization usually it creates much larger Python 3 with small increase in time to compile. Runtime results do not show any benefit from doing this. Let's add it on anyway. Um, it could be certain architectures or platforms it does make a difference or more of a difference rather. Okay, so that's the configuration. Let's build it.
Okay, that's built. Uh, and let's run tests on these. It says two tests are expected to, or known to fail. So we'll see how we go.
Right, so it says that the failure then, t then success, 15 tests skipped. Um, some of them look like they may be Windows related possibly, sound related, so the things I haven't got. Um, is that 64 bit zip files? Um, and strange enough, the two that are mentioned there aren't listed here, so it could be because it's uh, at the moment an incomplete um, installation. For example, GDB requires some tests, it says there, so it could be why those have appeared. Uh, but apart from that, it's a good run if it ran 400 and so, and we've only got seven, uh, 15 that have failed. So let's install or reinstall Python 3.1.1 now because we installed it initially as part of the original Linux from scratch build. Um, running papers that we're using. Upgrading and the documentation has been downloaded. Option installed as a root user. So let's do that. And I think we've already got this for. Uh, let's look at that link first of all. So we need that one by the looks of it. Yep, there's that link now. And I think this has been put in the profile, is it? Was that it? No. Um, let's look up in FS twelve dot zero Python. Take me to BLFS actually. So we should have this pip dot conf already. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of another package then. So what package am I thinking of? Oh, would it be the end of Beyond Linux from scratch maybe? Uh, sorry, not the end, the beginning.
yourself fonts to start up files is one of these. Remember now, um, crap, I should be back here. Spin. Oh, now this is bugging me. I'm sure we added something to do with Python for some support. Uh, for something like this. Cow BFS boot scripts. script usage shell let's say TC profile input I'll say shells no Um, right, well, uh, I suppose we'll just put this into the profile then. Um, I'm sure I could have sworn we've done this, uh, unless I've seen something that we haven't done yet, and I've thought that it's something that's been, been completed. Uh, if we go to profile.d, uh, let's check that Python search one. I can't imagine it will be that one. Oh, it's that. Yes, it is that. That's what I'm thinking of. So it's something to do with certificates, right? Okay, so it's something different. So in that case, let's create a new file. Uh, let's copy that one actually to Python 
uh, docs, we'll call it, dot sh, edit python docs, and we just let's delete that line, insert another one and just copy and paste that into there, save it. Now we'll probably need to make this, I know it's already rewrite, uh, write, uh, execute or readable at least, because we copied Python certs. So if we uh, did Let's echo dollar python. Yeah, there's no variable there. If we do etc profile and source that, and now echo dollar python, you can see we've now got that variable set. So that's done. So let's tidy up. Python 3, and I'm going to quit this session, go back in again, echo dollar Python, yeah, so that shows that the documentation's pointed at by that variable, and it points to Python 3 documentation, um, nowhere else, because obviously we haven't got documentation for Python 2, so we want it pointing to somewhere that doesn't exist. So that's Python 3 installed. Now I'm going to take a chance again with subversion and run make minus k test. Oh, and this is not running at all now, but at least it's not complaining that um, it can't find that module. So maybe now subversion does need to be reinstalled now that that Python module is available. So we'll start again from the beginning. Uh, oh, I did the wrong tab. This is Python 2, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. Oh, should have been make check. Never mind. It's probably just as well that I'll start again. So grep. I said, I'll just copy this as it is, if I recall. Yeah, there's no other options at the moment. Okay, and no documentation, I haven't got Java installed, so I'll put these bindings in. I'm doing these one at a time because there's no uh, double ampersand to cause the remaining commands to fail if an earlier command fails. So rather than copying it all in and possibly miss a failure, which is unlikely because this is the third time I've built this now. Um, it is best to put them in separately. Okay, let's do the Python bindings. and the Ruby. Okay, let's try this test. Yeah, it's running now. So it's because Python wasn't rebuilt, Python 3. So maybe that's something that could be changed in future documentation. I presume it had been there previously. Um, 
there is no mention of Python 3 needs to be rebuilt uh, within Beyond the Linux from scratch after SQLite. Um, it could be that this is actually incorrect, that it should read Python 3 with SQLite support for the tests. Um, so there's an anomaly there. This sort of thing that occasionally find with Beyond Linux from scratch instructions, and it's probably because it's such, it's such a big book compared to Linux from scratch. Um, and also it's uh, obviously more complicated than Linux from scratch. Linux from scratch is just a sequence of steps to follow. Whereas beyond Linux from scratch, it's very nature, it's very random. Uh, and therefore I'd imagine a lot harder to test. Um, so you do have to expect to, some some anomalies to occur sometimes.
Okay, so we've got uh, all past by the looks of it. Several skips, 80 expected failures. So that's okay. Uh, we can check the bindings that we compiled. So that's the Perl ones. That looks okay. We've got pass as a result. So that looks okay. Looks like there's one skip there for the Python ones. And finally, the Ruby bindings. Okay, so that says 100% pass, that's all okay. So let's now install There's no uh, Java bindings to install. So let's install again each of these one at a time because they're not they're separate commands, they're not chained together with the double M send. So do a bit at a time just to keep an eye on the result at the end. That's okay. Right, this one's failed. Relink above command before installing it. Okay, is that saying that relink with the above command? Cannot find LSVN client dash one. Now let's try and LD config and rerun that command. No. Let's try and find that. That will be in the lib. Interesting.
So is this command here, I take it, that failed? Unsure why that's not working. Uh, so let's look for this file across the whole file, file system, um, as I'm not sure where it should be. Lib SVN client, not SVN client. That looks like a naming error. Uh, is that it there? Let's lib SVN client. So it changes directory, then it runs a shell, runs libtool, relink, libsvn swigpy. So version libsvn client, libsvn client, dash one dot la. It says it can't find a different file. Um, let's try running that remove LA files. Rerun this make command. Oh, I have to go back to sources BLFS. Subversion, try that again. Lib is not a valid tool archive. Oh, that's because I've just deleted that, isn't it? So is that what this does? It builds that, does it? I take it. Let's rerun that. Nothing to be done. Uh, I'm not sure what I've done here. Well, I've certainly broken something by removing the LA files, um, which doesn't normally happen. I'm tempted just to leave this and try it again when I rebuild S, uh, subversion after it's been f installed with all its dependencies. Um, because I'm, I'm not sure what's actually going on here. Let's try, I'd imagine this might fail now. I've deleted the LA files, yeah. So it would probably in, entail rebuilding subversion to get them back. So I'll ignore that. Um, So I'm not, the next chapter is to run a subversion server. I'm not going to do that. Just leave it there. It can be used to access other subversion repositories. So I'll tidy this up. We've got the tools installed. It must be inclined. No, shared files not loading. There's something seriously wrong with this. Oh, 
maybe I do need to rebuild it and not delete those LA files. Oh no, I didn't install it, did I? Oh dear. This is turning out to be a bit of a nightmare, this one. Um, right, I'm going to have to do it again. Okay, so skip these two, we'll install the bindings for Perl. Now Python. And Ruby. Right, rerun, make check. We know this should pass.
Right, so that's done. So now let's do the checks for the bindings. So that one's okay. Let's see if this Yeah, that's going okay again. Okay, I just realised I had installed this obviously because the program was returning a an error but I suppose now I've deleted those LA files, this might have an effect on the installation of the bindings. Um, if they still fail, I'll just ignore it and leave it for when the uh, all the dependencies have been installed. And it could be, it's very possible there's other dependencies not listed on this page that might have an effect, a, good, a beneficial effect. Um, I've seen that before in the Beyond Linux and Scratch book where maybe packages have been omitted or some sort of combination has a different effect on the package. Okay, so that's all passed. So let's do the installation again. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like those LA files have been installed at that point. Um, so let's do the Perl binding installation. Now let's try this one again. Yeah, it's still failing, so I'm just going to ignore that for now. I don't know why that is. Let's try the Ruby one. And that's behaving the same way. Yeah, I can't find this SVN client dash one file. So I don't know why that is. So two of those bindings aren't installed. Um, but apart from that, this will be done for now. So that's subversion complete until libsecret and Java reinstalled. Go back to Git. So we've, oh yeah, we've just installed TK earlier. So that's done. Valgrind we're not going to do. So it looks like we're ready to install um, Git. Uh, I think this is all the dependencies complete now actually. Oh, IO socket we need. I think I always miss that one because it's sort of embedded elsewhere amongst a load of uh, modules that are outside of Beyond the Linux and Scratch. Uh, yeah, we did curl, we did Apache, we did GNU PG. Got PCRE2. 
we've got that there's a runtime anyway we've just done subversion we've done tk we've got these two yeah all right i thought there was one outstanding but obviously not so this is io socket ssl which needs net ssl eay so let's put the record of that in there Fetch it. So a variant of the standard build and installation instructions it says here, so I'll just put that in. as long as it completes at the end of the tests yeah all tests successful we can install the package so that's done now we need uri which needs several Dependencies itself. Okay, so capture tiny now. So again, just use standard build instructions. Okay, so that's done. We can install the package. That's done. So now we've got uh, try tiny. Again, the standard build instructions of Perl modules and install it. Next is test fatal. Build it again and install. That's done. Then we need test needs.
same instructions again and install it now test warnings Again, normal build instructions and then install it. And this is an optional one, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's not too onerous to install this. Once again, same instructions as before, and that's done. Install it, and that's complete. <coughs> Business ISPN. And yes, again, you can see standard build instructions. So that's done. We just install it and it's complete. Close it down and we're back to URI. Same instructions as before. And that's all complete. Uh, install and tidy up. So now we're in a position where we can call, uh, install the actual module that we need which is io socket ssl uh, copy the link address
Right, so that's all built. Let's now install it. And that's done. Right, and we're finally in a position to build Git. So I don't think I've installed this or downloaded it yet. No. Additional downloads not needed if you've installed ASCII.xmlto and prefer to rebuild them. So we can try that, but I'll fetch these anyway in case they don't work and other docs not needed if you installed ASCII doc uh, copy link right so there's a few things to do here so let's extract Git first of all. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I've extracted the HTML docs. Right, so I need to tidy this up first of all. Um, oh dear. Oh dear, that's made a right mess, that has. Uh, let's remove all the HTML. Let's list them. Yeah, I think I can get, just delete them. Now let's list all the txt files. Make sure there's nothing here. Just check that file there. There's a git file and I'll check that one. Yeah, that's a git file. Just concerned about deleting anything like the oh that was libmd5, anything like this. So let's delete star txt. patch files, so I need to delete these directories. So how to technical role notes. That looks like that's it. So hopefully I've not deleted anything I shouldn't have done and hopefully that's all. Yeah, right, let's try that again, but with the right package, that one there. Right, I'm wondering if it's time for a break very soon as I'm getting a few mistakes now. Uh, right, so configure, let's check the options, Python 3, right, so with libpcre2, we'll add that because we have built it with JIT enabled, which is not the default, we're not using pcre1. So that's the only extra option we need to add in. And 
this is Git. We're doing, and we're re we're going to rebuild this. I don't think this is it, isn't it? So, yeah, we don't need to rebuild this one. Okay, so that's the configure. Let's now build. Okay, it's done. Um, you can build man pages and or HTML docs use downloaded ones if you choose to build them using extra instructions. So let's try this one. So that's worked. And for the man pages, we'll try this. The only reason I'm not sure it might work is because I think XMLTO is a dependency for FOP which we haven't installed yet but it does seem to be working so that's good yep that's all all done um, the test suite can can be run in parallel mode to run the test suite issue make test so let's put a minus J 16 in fact I'll try it initially without and just keep an eye on the terminal to see if it does actually spawn jobs because we've got the make flags set yes it is using all cores so this this should be quick so it's not the ca case that it can be run it will if you specify the right parameters so I'll wait for this to finish now Okay, so that's finished. Um, now it does say parcel 196 test and it says there's an error which indicates that not everything went totally well. Um, three tests are known to fail due to curl 8.1. So, um, oh, okay, this devil's all right, still have three known breakages. That could be the ones then. Get complete remote ref spec. That's a known breakage, that's okay. This has got some more known ones. Skip the tests. Scroll back so you can see anything in red, maybe, or anything that looks a bit different. Does it say how to view the errors? No, it doesn't. Right, there's one there. Uh, not okay. The cookies are redacted by default. Okay. That's another one there, the looks of it, was it? Redax all details. Also, it looks like the errors aren't quite the same, but they're odd errors here and there. Um, test results. Let's have a look in there. Uh, 
All oh, right, okay, so it says T5559. Failed three, yeah, there was three failures there. Um, I don't know how we would actually find out what has failed. So these are just individual test results. Um, aggregate results. Let's try running that. No. Okay, I don't know how to find out what else has failed, but just looking back, it doesn't look like too much has failed. So, um, happy to take that as a pass. So, let's now install. Okay, we created the man pages and the documents, so let's install them. And the HTML docs. We didn't download them, so we skip these two, but for both methods, we need to reorganize them. So let's put these commands in, that's all finished. And again, like this subversion, it's got another chapter running a Git server. I'm not going to run the Git server, I don't need to. Um, so that is Git complete. And we'll shut that one down. So now we'll go back to setup tools, which is what required Git. And we still need to install Mercurial. So this has got some dependencies. Uh, let's have a look at DocuTools first. So that's a Python module. Let's do that one next. Oh, shame it doesn't put the module names here, but never mind. Uh, so this is now docutils. Copy link address, fetch this. Right, so to install it, we run this command here. And then as the root user, we put these commands in. It says to reduce the time needed for loading Python scripts, pip3 install, compile scripts with extension py into bytecode and save results into pyc in the directory py cache. By, but this package installs py scripts into user bin, so the bytecode files can then be installed into user bin py cache, which is not allowed by FHS. So as a root user, remove this directory. So that's done. Oh, there was other options on this. I didn't realise that. Oh, I think these are just basic Python options. Yeah, I think there's been those on every module. So that's not a problem. Uh, GPGME, let's have a quick nosy at that one. So it's 
got QT mentioned here, so that one's gonna have to be done after QT. So let's put that in. Uh, Mercurial rebuild after GPGME to get the documentation. and pigments so that's a python module let's do that one now Uh, let's tidy this one up. So build the module. Install it. And that's done. Back to Mercurial. We've got Rust C next. My curl. I don't know if it's right. I think I've already put this off once. Uh, let's have a look at GDB. Uh, right, and this needs GCC. Right, I think it might be time to start thinking about getting these compilers installed. So that's GCC with the extra languages. Which is used for testing LLVM and uh, Rust. So I think we might have to follow that path next. Um, so let's get Rust C up. So we've done CMake curl, so it is LLVM next, followed by GDP, used by the test suite if present. LLVM, what does this need? Oh yeah, this has got a load of dependencies as well, so I'm gonna have to rebuild this because graph is, will need to be put in. because uh, I think that's reliant on a lot of graphics types packages. Yeah, GTK is a fairly big package with a lot of dependencies. Yep, so that'll have to be reinstalled. Let's have a look at root common mark. I think this one had almost available documents in size. Sure, what that one is. Oh, these are all Python, okay. And that needs text life for tests. Um, we could possibly attack this one because it does seem to crop up a few times. Um, and then just reinstall it when text life has been installed. Oh, PY test we're trying to build as well. Uh, uh, this is really common, Mark. I 
and LVL VM. I think the so LLVM should be rebuilt after Graphism and Recon Mark have been installed and Text Live. I think we can do that one. Zip straightforward. Yeah, I think that's probably the thing to do. Because LLVM is used by a few projects, a few important projects as well. Yeah, so let's go to PYYAML next. And it needs Libyam, all we've already got. It needs Scython. Okay, I need to check these other modules that we've got, these Python modules. I think that needs PY test. So those two are waiting for PY test, which is what we're trying to ultimately build. So let's do this Scython. One next. So build it. And let's install it. And it's done. So now I can build PY YAML. Install it. That's done. Back to LVM. So it's just zip three next. that in there. Copy and then address. So we'll just build this. There's no configure. There's no test. And we'll just Install it and that's done. So now we're on to LLVM. And so I'm going to put a note to rebuild this 
after a graph viz end recombinant mark so let's fetch the packages See make modules third party dependencies recommended download C Lang Apache Not sure that is Stack Smashing just takes us to the glossary and compiler RT. I presume that means runtime. I don't know. So we'll wait for these to download. Okay, so now let's extract the main package. Change into it. And we've got some commands here to extract some of the files we've downloaded. And that's done. Install CLang into the source tree. And if you've downloaded compiler RT, install it into the source tree with these commands. And then there's a grep for Python. If you've downloaded CLang, apply the patch, which we have, so we'll do that. Downloaded compiler RT, fix a test case. We'll do that. Create a build directory. And then we've got this CMake command here. And before we go any further, we'll check to see if there's any other options that we might need to or might want to set. So enable FFI on dylib. We do on lib uh, build type release targets to build so yeah I'm still not sure about this by the AMD is needed but I've found that in the past this won't build without AMD GPU for some reason um, I mean I'll try it again but uh, it does say the switch now is building the same target as the host and also for the R600 AMD GPU used by the Mises 600 Radeon SEI drivers um, or whether it's the Mesa that needs it actually, uh, maybe I'm not setting the right switches in Mesa. Um, I'll take it out because it seems a bit pointless having to build something that's not going to be used. This system's only got an Intel graphics card, it's never going to have a AMD GPU in it. Um, and the host that should resolve to x86 because that's which is this one here. So that can stay as it is. Um, link dylib on 
enable RTTI. It might mean that I have to rebuild LLVM if I can't get Mesa to work with these settings, but I'll try it once again. I have had it working without it, so maybe it's just a setting or something that I've not done correctly since. Uh, bin new tools include uh, benchmarks equals off. Not current level. Pion Linux is on. Shared libs. If used instead of okay. Enable docs general. Right, we don't want that either. So that's the only change I'm making is that one removing the AMD GPU. <coughs> And I think this takes a while to build. Well, not too bad. So let's now run Ninja to build it. I'll time this.
Right, so that's finished compiling in 23 minutes. Um, if you've installed re common mark, you can generate documentation, so we haven't got that. Um, I imagine the CLang documentation won't be able to either. This LLVM test can produce many core dump files that will occupy a large amount of disk space and the core dump process can significantly slow down all testing. So to test the results with core dumps, disabled issue this. So let's time that. And wait for it to finish.
Right, so that's finished. It's failed, but it does say that some tests will fail. Uh, had 19 failed. So this is one will fail for config user and that's well we've set that for something else earlier on so we shouldn't have had that one. One, two, three, four, five are known to fail with glibc two three eight. But out of 65,000, I think it was tests that were run. 19 is not bad at all. Yeah, 63,000. Um, I think that's probably okay. So these are the right failed ones. So address sanitizer. I can't see that one there. Memory sanitizer, memory profiler. And another one that I mentioned there, and other ones that are in the book uh, seem to have failed either. Scanner allocate. Interception alloc. Oh, yes, I see. It's the um, actual script, the code itself, rather than this name here. So A2I and friends OOBT test, so it's that one. So that's those first four there are all related to that. The looks of it. To L O O B. Yeah, that's that one. L L O B, so that's the first three. A to I and friends are open. So it looks like it's repeated those names again and again. So they're the same name but in different test sections, if you like. We've got interception malloc test. Yeah, that's there. Log path test is not mentioned. So that's probably the only one so far. Interception, log path, log path, log path, and scanf allocate. So that's there. So it's only this log path test one that's actually failed that's not mentioned. So that's basically one test that's unaccounted for, one type of test. So uh, how many times that appear? One, two, three, four. Four out of about 30 or thousands, not bad. So that's, um, I think that's a good success. Uh, obviously, if that's important to you, then you might want to investigate that. So let's do an install. Uh, we haven't built any documentation so that's done now um, but I've got that to rebuild after graphics and recommon mark to build the documentation so I'll shut that one down now we've got rust C so next we need GDB to be installed and that requires six, which is a Python module. Build it with this and install this one. Okay, that's done.
then we're looking at GCC and maybe oh have I shut down Rust oh no that's the one alright oh, so it looks like there's a circular dependency here so GDP is required for the Rust test suite and Rust is required for the GDB test suite so um, I think GDB is going to be a quick one to install so that's the one I'm going to choose to install twice uh, let's have a look at Guile see what that needs GC and Unistring oh GDB's runtime only we're going to install that twice anyway with atomic ops right yeah I think we're going to do Guile then so let's work on that next and then I'll do GCC after that so yeah we've already done libuni string let's double check that yeah we have so GCC uh, sorry GC next which needs libatomic ops Okay, so that's the next one. Uh, okay, let's now configure. There's no extra options to consider. Run some checks. And that's all passed. Now let's install. That's that done. GC next. Oops. So what we've got here, uh, so there's nothing extra to add or take away from that. So we'll just copy and paste the configure and make command. And check the results. And then become root to install it so GDB's runtime only dependencies and it's going to be installed anyway uh, twice although it's not installed at the moment it won't be run at the moment so we can Put that in. Extract it and start the build. So there's no extra configure options mentioned, so I'll just build it.
Right, so that's um, built. That's from the tests. It says on a I six eight six system, as many tests, as many as ten tests will fail the numbers test suite. So, I'm assuming that means on a sixty four bit system, which I assume what they mean by I six eight six. Um, there shouldn't be any tests. That fail. Okay, so that's run. There's 43,000 tests run there, by the looks of it. And there are no errors, so that's okay. So now let's install a package. Um, that's all this lot here. That's guile complete. So that's guile done. Back to GDB, and I think it's time to do uh, GCC next. So additional languages include D and Ada, but they're not going to be shown how to install here because they need a binary bootstrap by the looks of it for the first installation. But you can proceed along the same lines as below after installing the corresponding compiler from binary package. So I'm not going to do that. Just follow the instructions in the book. Uh, if you're upgrading GCC from any other version, which you're not, so let's fetch the package again. And while that's downloading, we'll read the introduction here. Even if you specify only languages other than C and C++ to configure command below, the installation process will overwrite your existing C and C++ compilers and binaries. Run the full set of suite of tests is recommended. Do not continue with making install command until you are confident the build is successful. Instructions below intentionally performing a bootstrap process. Bootstrapping is needed for robustness and is highly recommended when upgrading the compiler's version to disable bootstrap and disable. So it looks like we're, well, Go is the one I think we've seen a few times now that's required. Oh, and this particular one we're building for GDB needs ADA and G4TRAN for the tests. So, I don't know why the download's so slow, it's quite ridiculous that is, uh, but we'll wait for that. Sped up a little bit now. So 
So it looks like the instructions are fairly identical. It's just the initial bit with the uh, configuration, uh, including all these extra languages. So I imagine this is going to take quite a bit longer than it did previously. Um, not too bad the looks of it. Okay, that's downloaded, so let's extract. And change into the directory. Looks like we'll do some changes for 64 bit. Make a build directory and change into it. And then run configure. Right, what did that say there? Oh, it tells us the following languages are going to be built, so it's OK. And we can start the build.
Okay, so that's built successfully uh, after just half an hour or so. So I'm going to run the tests now. As before, we increase the new limit level and run make check.
Okay, so that's finished and as expected we've got some errors. Um, let's have a look at the test summary. So got some just going to look for anything that I don't really like the look of um, just remember what we've seen before uh, on the Linux from scratch build so there's eight unexpected there that looks familiar that one um, it does say the if all the compilers above are built, there'll be a little over 80 unexpected failures. So there's eight there. There's 21 there, so that's 29. And these look similar to errors I've seen earlier on today. That's 29. Two there is thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. Oh, so there's only thirty three there, and they've, they've expected to see eighty, so I think that's uh, quite successful. So let's reinstall GCC over the LFS one now. So that's complete. And what's this bit down here? And yeah, there's nothing to rebuild here GDB was required but I was going to rebuild GDB again as that was a short one um, I'm not sure if some tests would have been skipped because as I say, the number of tests that failed was minimal um, so I imagine as GDB was optional um, maybe for tests, I don't know. Uh, it obviously didn't seem to have that much of a, an impact on the compilation of GCC. So I don't think that needs to be recompiled at all. Get rid of that. And GDB can be, oh no, GDB is going to be reinstalled for Rust, that's right. So now GDB can be installed. For the first time, uh, GCC. So let's now uh, let's put this in spreadsheet and rebuild after Rust. Rust C. So let's extract. Build this. Is there any optional? No, there isn't. So it's just explanations. We'll just copy and paste the build instructions.
Okay, so that's built and we can test the results with these commands here. Right, I just notice it says there are many problems running the test. So clean directories are needed for running the test without reason, make a copy of the compiled source code. It's too late for that now. Results depend on installed compilers. Um, test run the test suite. I had 183 unexpected failures out of 105,000. Some systems GDB2E test suite will fail if running over SSH. And on AMD systems, an additional 200 tests may fail. So it's looked like we might expect to see um, approximately a couple of hundred failures. And maybe more if this was an AMD machine.
Okay, so that's finished with 76 failures, unexpected failures. Um, so that's again a lot better than what's in the book. So I'm not going to really bother too much about looking for what they are. Uh, just going to install them. The package. That's it. There's no API documentation to install, so I'll I'll leave this up actually because I'll rebuild it um, after Rust C. Uh, I might take a copy of that just to see how it improves. After the Rust C has been installed, see what effect it has. Um, but for now, I think I'll leave that for this session. I'll just tidy this up and carry on with Rust C next time.